Blueprint, give it up for him. One more time, give it up for Blueprint. Come to God, come to God. Two more people, two more people, all right? Two more people. Y'all not ready to go, are you? No. All right, we can stand up two, three hours, right? Yeah, it's like that. All right, next guy coming up is a very, very, very good friend of mine. Uh, he's performed all over. He's really, really taking his time to another level, all right? And you will see now. Um, please put your hands together for Mr. Joe Nate. Also, it's his birthday today. our host, isn't he funny? I know he's headed toward stardom because he's doing everything that a celebrity comic does. He's on Facebook, he's on stage, he's on Twitter, he's on drugs, yeah, baby. and eventually on trial. I like how you introduced me, Ace, but as your friend, but uh, next time if you could also credit me with the Gotham Comedy Club in New York and the Laugh Factory in L.A., because I have visited both of those <laughs> website pages. Uh, last week we were performing in a Mexican restaurant. Tonight we're in a coffee house. We've exchanged refried beans for coffee beans. Doesn't matter, either way we end up in the bathroom. A lot of new faces here tonight which is fantastic, so I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I was born in Battle Creek, Michigan. Some of you may know that as the cereal capital of the world because it's home to both Post and Kellogg cereals. Our high school mascot was a flake. <laughs> we could never count on him. In high school, I was on the football team and on the chess team. I think the hardest part about being both a jock and a nerd at the same time was having to give myself wedgies. <laughs> I went to the bank this morning. I told them I wanted to pay a bill from my account using an electronic funds transfer. They said, I'm sorry, Mr. Nay, you can't do an EFT because your account has nothing L-E-F-T. <laughs> Which I wouldn't have minded, except when he emphasized the L, he did this. <laughs> Which was pretty ballsy of him, because I could have taken that as flashing a gang sign, and obviously I'm gangsta. <laughs> and then I would have to throw down on him to protect my street cred. <laughs> and by street, I mean Wall Street. <laughs> My family was questioning why I would want to get into comedy at such an advanced age that all the younger audiences, they wouldn't understand me because my pop culture references are from the 70s. I said, yeah, I, I, I know, but I'm doing it for them. I, I want them to want me. I would love you to love me. I want you to want me. Sorry, guys, that was a cheap trick. When I first got into comedy, uh, I wasn't sure about the audience reaction, if it was working. My very first joke was about Malaysian Flight 370, and to this day, I still don't know if it landed. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> that I was dating a woman from Australia for a while, which is pretty much the same as dating a woman from the Northern Hemisphere, except I go down on her counterclockwise. <laughs> Uh, we, we broke up, and then I tried a dating service for the very first time. I told them I was expecting to find a woman that was successful, intelligent, humorous, and liked sports. So I wrote up my bio and gave it to them and asked if I needed to change anything. They said, yes, your expectations. <laughs> I do not have Tourette's syndrome, but I am a carrier. I cause people around me to curse. <laughs> I do not have chronic constipation, but it's true, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I do not have diabetes. There's no joke there, I just thought you might be curious because you would think, right? <laughs> I'm 
I'm going to stop right here because this has been bothering me the whole time I've been up here. I finally figured out who you remind me of, ma'am. Yeah, you know that show on TV, America's Top Model? You remind me of someone who would watch that show. <laughs> Medicine is getting pretty expensive, so on my last prescription, I ordered it online from China. When I got it, though, it wasn't working. So I did some research and found out that a lot of the pills that come from China are not really medicine at all. They contain drywall materials. So I stopped taking it, except recreationally when I wanted to get plastered. <laughs> It was supposed to be Viagra, but the only thing I could erect with it was a house. <laughs> In China. Everything's going the way of China these days. Even my psychic, she used to read tarot cards and tea leaves. Now she reads fortune cookies. I asked her if it worked out okay if I snitched on my neighbor. She said it was the year of the rat. So I took that as a yes. <laughs> I don't use her anymore. I found out she's inaccurate. She told this guy he was going to live to be 100, but he died of, at 50 of radiation poisoning. He only lived a half-life. <laughs> Not many physicists or nuclear <laughs> physicists in the audience tonight. <laughs> right out of school, I had a really good job as a software developer. Then I stepped down to a middle management desk job. Now I'm trying to be a comic. Seems like I'm on the Benjamin Button career path. <laughs> if you guys don't laugh at me today, I'll be out on Oakland Park holding signs. <laughs> then eventually at the end, I'll hit the rock bottom and become a Comcast customer service operator. <laughs> I was at a cocktail party. A woman I didn't even know came over to me and started rubbing my big belly. She asked if it worked like a Buddha statue where she could ask for a wish. I said I'd be much more likely to grant her wish if she rubbed lower. <laughs> because my feet were really hurting. I think ambition and laziness is determined at a very early age. I was in third grade, a teacher asked us what we wanted to be when we grow up. And several said astronaut, president, movie star, all very ambitious. I said I wanted to be a cleaning person. She said, that's, that's very honest work, but that's really hard. I said, no, wait, you didn't let me finish. I want to be a cleaning person at Disney World. She said, even worse, millions of people go through there every day. I said, no, wait, you didn't let me finish. I want to be a cleaning person at Disney World at the haunted house, because that's supposed to look dirty. <laughs> if my boss ever came looking for me, I'd be over in frontier land sitting on a bench. <laughs> to show you how my level of laziness lasts even to today, I didn't write an ending for that joke. <laughs> I recently became a member of the Mile High Club, accidentally. The airline lavatories are so small and I am so large that when we hit an air pocket, I became intimate with a soap dispenser. <laughs> I call her Bubbles. She doesn't have much personality, but she is self-lubricating. So I guess that's a wash. Because of that incident, Virgin Airlines will now have to change their name. Thank you very much. Miss Joe Nay, give it up for us. Thank you guys for coming out uh, to the coffee house tonight.